Elizabeth Annie Onwu and I'm a retired professor of nursing. I'm an emeritus professor of nursing at the University of West London. And I'm also vice chairperson of the Mary C. Cole Memorial Statue Appeal. As a result, I'm often invited to talk to student nurses about Mary Seacole, but I like to put it within the context of nursing history, uh, particularly the relationship between Mary and Florence Nightingale. But I've often been surprised that students don't know very much, if anything, about the history of nursing. People often ask me, why is Mary Seacole so important? I mean, she was a nurse that died 130 years ago. Well, I think her life and her contributions, as well as those of Florence Nightingale, can tell us a lot about um, nursing today. And we really shouldn't forget where we've come from if we want to understand where we are today and also what our future might hold for us. Nightingale was born in 1820 in Florence. Her family, her parents were affluent, upper middle class and were doing a world tour when Florence was born in Italy. I love the fact that Florence Nightingale's father saw the value of education of his daughters in an era when that wasn't necessarily the case. She was extremely well educated at home in both English, history and particularly maths. Hence, as we now know, she was a very, very good statistician. Florence Nightingale's stories I find very fascinating. She was from a very upper middle class background. She heard voices from God as a teenager calling her to be a nurse. She faced absolute obstruction from her family in regards to this career move and she had incredible networks and determination so she did become a nurse so much so that the British government asked her to supervise the nursing services in the Crimean War at a time when the French were being complemented in terms of the nursing care of their soldiers by French nuns in contrast to the miserable treatment that British soldiers were receiving in the battlefield. As we know, Florence Nightingale is incredibly well recognised for her contributions to nursing, as she should be. But equally important, and now very well recognised, is the contribution of Mary Seacole to the nursing profession. Mary Seacole was born in 1805 in Jamaica of a Creole Jamaican mother who was a doctress and a hotel keeper and a Scottish military father. And Mary, in her autobiography, always acknowledged the influence of both her her mother and her father in where life subsequently took her. She followed in her mother's footsteps as a doctress and used Creole medicines, using native Jamaican herbs, for example, uh, to care for the sick. She became very famous in the Caribbean for her care of victims of yellow fever and cholera, both in Jamaica but also in Central America, in Panama. So much so that the British military authorities asked her to supervise the nursing services at their military camp in Kingston, Jamaica. Part of Mary's work in Kingston, Jamaica brought her into contact with British military and naval officers and soldiers and staff. As a result, she heard about the outbreak of the war in the Crimea. Not only that, she realised that many British soldiers that she knew in Jamaica, were now already being sent out to the war zone. And she felt, with her knowledge of infectious diseases, she could actually contribute a great deal to the nursing care of the soldiers. So when she heard about the campaign to recruit nurses to support Florence Nightingale, she decided off she'd go to England and offer her services. Florence Nightingale had already set out 
with her first group of nurses. What shocked Mary was she was rejected five times in her offer to go out and nurse the soldiers in the Crimean War, even though she was armed with glowing references from senior medical personnel. This was a very difficult time for Mary, and one of the lessons for me is that she overcame this adversity and actually used her entrepreneurial skills, found the money, and paid for her own passage to go out to Turkey to get to the Crimea. An interesting point for somebody like myself, an older woman, is that Mary Seacole was 49 when she went out to the Crimea. I don't think many people realise that. I find it very interesting to look at the similarities between Florence Nightingale and Mary Seacole. For a start, both were very, very strong-minded women. They were intelligent and they were compassionate. In the Crimean War, the British soldiers called them both mother, which highlights their maternal instinct. But both also were very, very determined women who, when they encountered barriers, overcame them. Maybe in different ways, but they were very, very strong-willed. Both Mary and Florence were incredibly good at networking. Florence with her connections in the government and Mary using her connections in the military from generals downwards. Both women overcame hurdles. Florence on the grounds of gender and Mary on the grounds possibly of gender but also of race. But they both overcame those obstacles and here we're again looking at similarities of the strategies they may have used to do so. Florence used her writing skills to lobby on behalf of what she wanted at Scutari in the Crimea. Mary used her entrepreneurial assets to get across to the Crimea regardless of the fact that she did not get any support in London. As a nurse, what delights me about Mary and Florence is their commitment to what we call holistic nursing care now. In the writings of both, we can see the importance they have for sanitation, for nutrition, but also caring for soldiers at a time of illness, at a time of dying. What's really good is that there is written documentation about Florence and Mary's beliefs in nursing practice. For example, Florence Nightingale's notes on nursing and Mary Seacole's autobiography. But there's also one person who wrote about both of them, and that was Sir William Howard Russell, the war correspondent of the Times, who beautifully describes the commitment of both to improving nursing care. There are some fascinating differences, though, between Florence and Mary. Florence was a very disciplined, puritanical woman who was very controlling, but that was because she was desperate to get all this work done to improve the hospital organisation and nursing care. On the other hand, Mary was more laid back, down to earth, great sense of humour and supplied alcohol in the British Hotel at the same time as she offered nursing services. And this is where there's a little bit of tension emerges between Florence and Mary, as we can see from the writings. Mary and Florence first met in the Crimea. They were aware of each other's practices, but there are mixed messages about how Florence felt about Mary. On the one hand, she acknowledged Mary's nursing commitment to the soldiers, but on the other hand, she was very unhappy about Mary running a hotel that she considered a bad house where there was alcohol flowing. In contrast, Mary highly respected Florence 
and this is demonstrated in her autobiography. If we look at the differences between Florence and Mary, one is finance. Here's Florence from a rich, upper-middle-class family, sponsored by the government. The Secretary of State at War was a friend of hers. So all her costs were covered. In contrast, Mary had to be self-sufficient. It was a good job that she was a businesswoman, because that's how she funded herself. But when the Crimean War ended very suddenly, Mary ended up bankrupt. Florence Nightingale is recognised for transforming nursing and professionalising it. She wrote the rules. Mary, on the other hand, when she thought it was necessary, threw away the rule book, but in a very positive way. So, for example, she, Mary, knew she wasn't supposed to go on to the battlefield. But as far as she was concerned, that's where the soldiers needed nursing. So, armed with her basket of bandages and Creole medicine, despite the soldiers saying, Mother Seacole, don't, your life is in danger, she went to where the soldiers needed her care. An important difference between the two nurses is that Florence Nightingale's contribution to nursing is recorded in history, whereas Mary's was overlooked. We recognise Florence's contribution in terms of hospital administration, but Mary contributed in a different way. One could argue it was more bedside nursing, but also as a military nurse as well. And Mary also is recognised as somebody who didn't allow discrimination to bear her down. And that's, that has a relevance for nurses today, whether they feel rejected on the grounds of class, gender, sexual orientation or race. You have to remember, Mary Seacole was a black, older woman who overcame all sorts of obstructions to get out there and nurse. Whilst there's a lot of positives in in nursing today, we are facing some very grave issues. And I think we can learn something from both Florence and Mary. We look at the scandals affecting the nursing profession. Here's where Florence's rules, regulations, professionalisation and ethics come into play. Florence would be lobbying about it. She would be using her networks. She wouldn't be scared to confront the challenges that we're facing. Many nurses face rejection and discrimination for a variety of reasons. And this is where Mary's experience comes into play. Mary refused to allow barriers to overcome her and stuck to her principles of holistic nursing care. And to sum it up, both Florence and Mary always remembered the patient. Both nurses were extremely angry at times about evidence of poor nursing care. Florence used her pen to lobby her networks to improve the nursing care at Scutari. We have examples of Mary, both in Central America and in the Crimea, of realising if there was a gap in the nursing care, she was prepared to get stuck in. There was a cholera epidemic. The health professionals fled the scene in Panama. She went in, rolled her sleeves up, organised the nursing care. in in that uh, gold prospecting town. In the Crimea, Mary realised that nursing care was needed closer to the battlefront than in Scutari. So she went off and organised a British hotel that included nursing care. For me, the upper middle class white English Florence Nightingale and the Jamaican nurse of Mary Seacole, although from different backgrounds, 
have actually left very important legacies for nursing today. What they've shown, for example, is that they both had anger. They were angry. And that anger at poor nursing care drove them to do something about it. Florence, using her networks, lobbied, using the power of the pen. Mary, rolling up her sleeves and getting on with it. The other aspect is that they were both very determined. They wouldn't allow any hurdles to stop them in their track. Be it doctors being awkward with Florence Nightingale or Mary being rejected to go out and nurse in the Crimean War. And finally, both of them used their brains and their minds to use their initiative. They never waited to be told what to do. They used their own intelligence and got on with it. Thank you.